Welcome to New Hampshire Politics with John Burt. I'm John Burt. Well, thank you for joining me this week, and, and hopefully you enjoyed last week's show, and this week is, it's almost gonna be kind of the same. You know, I just wanna talk about a couple different things. I got some pictures. Uh, they came out pretty good. Uh, not that I'm a professional photographer, but I, I got a good friend that's helping me with that. <laughs> I'm gonna get better each time. And there is one picture in there that I do wanna show you when it comes up. Uh, where I'm hoping to learn how to, you know, to clean this up. But I just want to show you where my problem was. Uh, also, I don't know if I told you last time, NH1 News interviewed me for about 24 minutes with uh, Representative Cushion. Uh, and I'm going to try to get that uh, tape if I can, and I'll just put it at the end of one of my short shows, which is going to be tonight. Um, i got to get out of here and uh, to a meet in, in Manchester. Uh, you know, by 6.30, so I gotta get over there. And, you know, they're serving pizza, so if I'm a few minutes late, I think I'll be okay. Uh, but I, I, I'm gonna have a piece of pizza tonight. And, you know, what's funny is now that I've lost my weight with my surgery and everything, um, I can eat half of the pizza, and then I eat the top of the other half. And pretty much that's it. it, it it's still mind boggles me that this really works. And, um, you know, I'm pretty happy. Uh, that I had that sleeve surgery done. Uh, it's made a big difference in my life. Uh, but I guess what I want to do is, oh, you know what I want to do too is I do want to bring up uh, a dear friend of mine uh, at the nursing home, uh, Betty. Uh, you know, I just want to say hi to her and you know, it was a pleasure seeing her again today. And I, I got a lot of friends there. Uh, you know, I really enjoy seeing them when I talk to them. And you know, there's a whole bunch of them that I, I, I do like seeing. And uh, so it was a fun day visiting with her and, you know, you know, I hope her well. And, you know, again, you know, hi, I just want to say hi to you. Uh, and in the Burt line, uh, that's going to be at, toward the end of the show uh, that I have that question that I asked last week. Uh, but I guess I, I'll bring up some pictures. And the first one, it's this is out front of my house across the road and it's a, with, mostly with a sun showing. Yeah, there it is. And I got my laptop off to the side and that's why I'm looking down. When I saw that, I just took some pictures because it just looked like the rays. I mean, the picture really doesn't do the actual, what I saw, justice. But it was pretty cool the way that came out, you know, with the rays and everything. And, you know, I just look at it. And then there was another one that has nothing but the rays. And I have my camera where when you press the button, it goes chick, 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 a whole bunch of pictures, and then I try to pick the best one out of them. You know, I usually click like four or five, seven times. You know, just holding it down, I can hear it clicking. And that was kind of cool, the way the rays came down. I really like my camera. Um, you know, it's really worked out well for me. Uh, and I am looking into a new lens. Uh, I've watched some YouTube videos. I got a lot to learn because they're saying this lens that I really want to get is uh, up to 500 or maybe even the other one is 600 millimeters, which is a long ways. And one guy goes, well, you set the shutter at 1.6 and then you set this at 1.2 and all these other numbers. And I'm like, okay, I'm lost. <laughs> you know, but it just takes practice and time. Um, tonight I learned how you can have one focus point and I got to learn how to do that because, uh, and I think that's part of the problem. Uh, let me find the next picture. It's the uh, bird at the feeder. Oh yeah, that's what this one is. It's, it's a bird coming down and how I got him. I don't know how, you know, I, I think I'm just lucky, but I was right there. So I clicked a few times and that's the one that came out. And if you notice the fence is perfectly in focus. That's what it pointed at. I got to learn how to do this on my um, uh, Nikon is I guess I can have one focus point and it will come just on the bird or, you know, wherever I point it. And, you know, there's going to be a learning curve, but I think it would have been pretty cool to get that bird right in flight like that. You know, that's just a cool picture when I see that. Yeah, and I don't know if you can get a the bird in focus and the wings in focus at the same time. Maybe you can, uh, because I'm looking. You know, the bird is is semi in focus, and then wings are just a moving. You know, but there's there's got to be a way to slow the shutter speed down or increase it. You know, I, I'm still learning on it. Um, you know, but that's pretty cool the way that came out. 
the next one, oh, you know what? I came out of order a little bit, so I did the fuzzy bird, sorry about that. And then the bird at the feeder is the, uh, the next one I'll show you. Yeah, he's in focus. And what was really cool is look at his eyes. When I, you know, like I said, I took a, about five, six. When I saw that, I'm saying, I almost think he's looking at me. <laughs> and I'm inside the house looking through a window. This is through a window. So I came out pretty good. I keep my windows pretty clean. Uh, but I'm looking at him and I'm going, yeah, I think he is. But look at his little feet. I don't know if you can tell, you know, that close on the TV, if it's going to come out good enough. But his little feet are hanging right around. It's just a really, really sharp picture. You know, I really enjoy doing that. Uh, what's the next one is, um, oh, Mr. Hawk. I did want to get him. And this is, again, uh, I'm trying to think the apple tree. It might be 15 feet, 12 feet from my house, and right outside a window. And there he is. He's sitting, and he's looking backwards at the chickens. Now, at that time of year, there was enough food, so I don't think he would have gone down and bothered them. I did have a hawk come down and get one. Uh, this was several years ago, the only time I've ever had any trouble and it was a ton of snow. We had snow for, you know, six, eight weeks, two feet deep everywhere. And I think, you know, the hawks get hungry because all the mice and squirrels, they're underground. I mean, under the snow, they're buzzing around under there. So Mr. Hawk can't find them. And that's really what they want. They don't want a chicken because they're, they're hard to kill for them. You know, it takes a lot of energy. So they want something easier. But he came out pretty good. I like him. And I, I can't remember, somebody did tell me what he was. And I, I don't remember what he is, but he's, he's a, he was a big boy. You know, I'm looking at him going, oh, <laughs> we got problems. But before I shoot him away, I, I did get a picture of him. And now the last picture that I have is really cool. And here it is, uh, the Oriole. Um, it, you know, just the orange on him. It, it just, again, you know, my focus point must have been right on him. Every now and then what I do, and now that I know that I don't have to do this, but how I got focused on him is I would press it once, and if he was blurry, I would release and press again, and that, that would change the focus points around. Um, I don't know how many I have set on that. Uh, but So I'm going to learn how to do just the one focus point, and that way I can zoom right in on him. And there he is. And he has been at the house every day for a week. He is buzzing that tree, the other trees. Now he's at the apple trees. And my wife, I didn't bring that picture in. I should have. Uh, my wife put an orange out there on this uh, feeder, but the problem is it spins around. It doesn't bother the bird. He's sitting right there. Uh, all of a sudden, he's there. You know, first couple days, he didn't bother it. And Phyllis like, oh, that didn't work. Well, then all of a sudden, I look out there. But all it is is fence behind it. I couldn't get him focused at all. So you know, as I was taking probably 30 pictures and not one of them. They were so blurry, there was no way I was going to see them. So I was like, darn, all right, not going to work on that. So like I said, you know, I got to learn how to get the focus points because I really enjoy taking pictures of my wildlife. And uh, so, yeah, that's about it on the pictures. Um, last week, I asked you a question uh, to call the BERT line. And what that was is, uh, you know, the BERT line is my uh, phone number that I have designated for it. And uh, it's, it's an answering machine. You can call it anytime you want because it just goes straight to an answering machine. And the number is 626-7446, and that's in New Hampshire. And what I asked is that constitutional carry passed and that our friends on the left, they didn't want this because they said there'd be shootouts in the streets. Now, you know, I, I do apologize for the audio didn't come in the greatest, but I think you can get the gist of what these two callers that called said. And the first one is Lynette Peterson. She was a former representative that I served with. She is hilarious. And, and I want to show you, I'll, let me bring this on and then I want to talk about Lynette after. And uh, here it is. Representative Burt, this is the Honorable Lynette Peterson, and my answer to your question is, 
constitutional carry puts firearms in law-abiding citizens' hands. The whack jobs have always had guns in their hands. This makes things more equal for law-abiding citizens to defend themselves against the whack jobs. The liberal left are dazed and confused. They think no one can function without rules, regulations, and taxes. Uh, they can't think for themselves. They need others to think for them. So, speaking liberal elected official says constitutional carry is bad. Of course, all the sheep are going to say it's bad. I miss you terribly, Representative Burst. You look awesome. The speeches on Facebook are stunning. Have a most excellent day. Bye. Well, there you are. <laughs> That is a, a former representative, Lynette Peterson. Sadly, her husband, um, he has a great job and they transferred him to Texas. So New Hampshire uh, lost her. So he, she's down there and, and uh, you know, I'm still good friends with her. Uh, we, why I wanted to bring her up, but first I wanted to talk about, you know, you know this is Lynette classic. <laughs> <laughs> the whack jobs and, uh, you know, just the way she talks. She was hilarious at the house. I don't know if you remember a long, probably three years ago, um, who was it? Senator, not uh, Senator, uh, Representative Campbell ran over some ducks at the um, Holiday Inn in Nashua. I don't know if you remember that. It made pretty big, a matter of fact, I think it made national news. Ducks got in his way and he was like, well, get out of the way, ducks. And he ended up killing a few of them. Well, oh boy. And you know what upset me? He was a Democrat. Nice guy. Where was the animal rights people? Why didn't anybody scream at him? No, because he's a Democrat. Now, that did bother me. You know, they should have been pounding on him. Well, I'll tell you, if I accidentally ran over some ducks, they'd be all over me, which rightfully they should be. If I, well, if it was an accident, that's one thing. It wasn't. We're sitting in the house, the next house session. All of a sudden, <laughs> I'm telling you, I almost wet my britches. It was close. All we heard was quack, quack, quack through a duck call. The speaker, Terry Navrelli, she looks up. I mean, daggers were coming out of her eyes. <laughs> and it was Lynette with a duck call, hiding in the back, leaning down, going quack, quack. Oh my God, I'll tell you, I have so much fun up to that state house. It, it, it was because of people like her, you know, it was just incredible. Uh, but I just love the way she talks. And one time we went down to DC together uh, to a conference and, uh, you know, she dragged me all over. I had a bum foot and that was when I was heavy. You know, I was probably almost at my peak, 378 pounds. She dragged me through that city at 100 miles an hour. So, you know, it's just hilarious. I, I really do miss Lynette. And, you know, maybe someday the, her, her, her husband's, you know, employer will transfer him back up here so we can get her back up here in New Hampshire. But anyways, I, you know, not to carry on too long about it, but it's just hilarious, especially the duck call. Oh, my God, I still laugh over that. Uh, the next one is, is a good friend of mine. Um, he lives over in Vermont. Um, uh, and uh, let me bring it on right now, and we'll talk a little bit about it. Here we are. Hey, John, as an advocate for constitutional carry, I can tell you that in over 230 years, Vermont has never had permits or permission to carry concealed. And in all those years, we have never had a shooting. It's not the Old West. It is actually a chilling effect against criminals who do not know who would or not be armed. Thank you. Yeah, I, I he, he, you know, I want to thank uh, Ed for calling me uh, because, you know, he, he nailed it right on. You know, if, if the bad guys don't know who's carrying, that's why I've always been a big supporter. You know, the states that have constitutional carry or, you know, a lot less laws like New Hampshire are safer states. I really believe in that. And, uh, you know, he nailed it right on there. And like he said, Vermont's had it for 230 plus years. They, I got on the House floor when I spoke on constitutional carry. I said, Vermont's had constitutional carry before there was a constitution. 
and all oh, the whole place just erupted into laughter. And uh, you know, but it's true. It works. You know, so I, and like Lynette said, um, you know, people want to defend themselves. And again, not everybody that is law abiding feels comfortable with a gun. And I understand that. Just don't deny the people that are law abiding that can, you know, responsibly have a gun. You know, and always go get training. Oh, you know what? I just popped in my head. I got to have those uh, ladies on from the Women's Defense League. My wife just went to a class of theirs and, oh, she had a great time. And of course, you know, you know, they, they do love me because, you know, because I fight hard for the Constitution, you know, for the Second Amendment, I mean, well, in the Constitution. But uh, so they gave her extra, you know, kind treatment. But I mean, they treat everybody great. Uh, but she gets home and she was like, well, they like you a lot. And I said, yeah, I think they do. So let me get a couple of them on the show. I've been meaning that and I've talked to them about it and I've mentioned it in the past. So let me make a note of that when uh, we get done the show and I'll make sure I get them on you know, because they have a lot to talk about. And because I had um, uh, uh, Bob Bullard on and he was really good. I got a lot of uh, good comments when he was on. Uh, he's with um, uh, the Defense League uh, in Manchester. And there's a whole bunch of them out there. So you know, Google it and get training. And what I want to do is talk to you about uh, my next question with the BERT line. And let me bring that up again. It's the BERT line 626-7446. And the next bill I'm going to be talking about is fetal homicide. Should New Hampshire have a fetal homicide like 38 other states have? Again, call 626-7446 and tell me what your thoughts on fetal homicide bill is and let me talk to you about the fetal homicide. This past week, uh, it came to the House Committee. I'm on the criminal justice. <sighs> Sadly, it didn't make it out of committee. I'm not happy about it, but you know, it's the way it is. Two Republicans voted against it. One Republican is a great vote. He's a great guy. Uh, he got bad information as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he said this attorney told him that it would, you know, there is unattended consequences. And I'm telling you, there isn't, that I know of. I mean, I have worked on this bill for three years. You know, uh, Leon Rideout that's been on the show, uh, he's really worked on this show. I put in an amendment, and again, this is Senate Bill 66. I put in an amendment that gave women the protection if they want to have an abortion. And I'm not an abortion fan, so this was hard for me to put this amendment in because I don't believe in abortion. You know, I, I you know, life is life. Um, but this amendment was from the Senate originally, or in the, the bill came forward, it would exempt them in RSA, which is a law, RSA 630 colon one. Well, then there's three other laws pertaining to murder or homicide or, you know, you know or any homicide or um, manslaughter. Um, and they are 630 colon two, three, and four. My amendment put that exemption in all four of them. That way, I thought, end of subject. The woman that does not want her baby and wants to abort it, she still has the right. This bill would not affect it. But no, the Democrats came out and sadly two De uh, Republicans joined and said, oh, you know, you're taking women's rights away. The bill doesn't do that. What the bill does, and I've explained this in the past and I'll be real brief on it because I know I've talked to this to death. If a mom wants to keep her baby in her belly and she's driving down the road and a person runs that, you know, he's drunk driver or she's drunk driver and causes that baby to die, like over in Lebanon. Remember that tragic? This guy wanted to commit suicide. He went through the medium with a big truck, hits this tiny little car he lives and kills the two occupants, which one of them was pregnant. So really three occupants, but she was eight and a half months pregnant they could charge him with two accounts of murder. That's it. That's what a fetal homicide bill does. 
is it would have allowed closure to that third, ba you know, the baby really, because that baby at eight and a half months could have lived, but sadly it died and um, that was the end of that. Uh, representative Leon Rideout, um, you know, he's former uh, representative. He had the same problem, his daughter, you know, accidentally, you know, got in a car crash, not her fault. This guy went through a stop sign. She lived, the baby died. He got a ticket for uh, going through a red light, I think, or a stop sign. It wasn't much, that was it. They can't charge anybody in New Hampshire. California, Illinois, all these 38 states have it. So that's why I want you to call in the BERT line, which again is 626-7446, uh, and let me know if you think we should have a fetal homicide bill or law, uh, which would protect that wanted baby, it has nothing to do with abortion, or you think we should stay, um, you know, like the 12 states that currently do not have it. Let me know. And uh, one other bill that came up, uh, let me see if I got the number on that. At first, I voted against this, uh, Senate Bill 133. And what this bill did is it bought, it's a huge cost, you know, allegedly they have this extra money. And um, I always question when the government says we have extra money. Well, why don't you give it back to us? But I guess that don't happen. It's to buy four or five metal detectors uh, for the state prison. And what they do is, at first I was against it because I said there should be an opt-out, like when you go to the airport, because people, some people don't want that radiation. I went to Stratford County, I mentioned in the past couple weeks, the Stratford County Jail, and they brought us to this machine. They have one. They're the only jail in, in the uh, uh, state that has one. And he says, well, we're looking for a volunteer. <laughs> he just joked. I said, I'll volunteer. Really? I was going to bring up a picture if you want. I said, no, I'll do it. So I got on there. <laughs> they scanned me. They found a key that I wasn't supposed to have. I forgot that it was in my pocket. <laughs> it was in my wallet. Uh, but then I said, you know, I want to know, how much radiation is this? And he said, it's like four. Uh, you'd have to ha uh, you could go through this machine 400 times to one chest x-ray. And I'm like, really? That ain't a lot. So then after researching it a little bit more, this bill came up in our committee for a vote and I did vote with it. Matter of fact, I think the vote was, um, oh, what is it? Uh, yeah, 21 to zero. So, you know, it passed unanimous. And um, so now I guess the state is gonna get some metal detectors for the prison. And what it does, is it detects uh, for drugs, and that's what they're after because they have a huge drug problem in jail. They're not going to do any, well, they're going to do guards randomly because sadly, you know, every now and then a guard gets caught bringing the drugs in, which is rare from what I understand, which I'm glad, uh, but you know, it does happen. So they're going to have that random. Uh, they're not going to do any visitors, but I guess they can if if they are having a trouble with a visitor, they're, you know, or suspicious, they'll say, look, if you want to see your loved one, you know, I'm kind of on the fence with that. I don't really like it because, you know, then you're forcing somebody that's innocent to do this. Um, but there's got to be a, you know, there's got to be a way to stop these drugs because from what I'm hearing, it's drug central in those jails. You know, you know I guess anything you want sitting in there. I, I'm, I, and it's kind of weird <laughs> how they do that. But again, you know, I, I've enjoyed talking with you this week. And, you know, like I said, I got to brush up my camera skills and because I'm going to Alaska. I don't know if I told you that. I'll be talking more about that when it gets closer in July. Uh, so I can't wait. And remember, give the BERT line a call, 626-7446. And let me know if you think we should have a fetal homicide law in New Hampshire. And until next week, have a good one. Bye now.